Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yaku and welcome to another STM32 tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to use printf with the UART line. So if you've been using UART with the STM board, you, I'm sure you'll be quite familiar with the fact that you would always have to use hull UART transmit and if you want to transmit a string then you would use printf to format all of your variables back to string and then we'll be able to send them via how you are transmit uh, alternatively you could have just used printf function to do the same thing in a single line so and that's what i'm going to show you today i'll show you how to use printf with stmuart and uh, in the first half of the video i'll show you how to do that with the uh, keel ide and then towards the second half we'll show you how to use that with a juno ide like uh, system workbench for STM32 or Eclipse. So we'll show you how to do this with um, two different compilers because there are some uh, some few different settings that you need to apply in order to get it to work in different compilers. Uh, all right, so, and also there's a bonus thing that I'll show you too, and that's um, if you are using an STM board that doesn't have a UART mapped out to the ST link, um, just like the STM of 4 Discovery, this board doesn't have any UART connected to the ST link. With the F4 discovery, if you want to use any UART, you've got to connect an external UART to USB converter. For this one, there is also a trick that you can use printf directly with the ST link, um, with the ST link USB, but that will only work with Keel. And I'll show you how to do that as well uh, towards the end of the first half of the video. All right, so I think that's um, pretty much enough introduction. So let's get started and set up a Cubemix project for a Keel printf example. All right, and on Cubemix, click on access to board selector, and we're gonna select our board. I'll be using the F401RE Nucleo for this demo. Um, and it will be the same thing when I demonstrate the F4 method, but also work in any other SDM. All right, so we'll be using the Nucleo F401RE, this board. <clears throat> All right, and since I selected initialize the default pins, it enabled my UART and my LED and button. But just in case you're not using a similar setting, let me clear all the pinouts and do all of them manually. All right, the first one to enable is the LED, uh, which is on PA5 for this board. So I'll set this to GPIO output, and I'm going to label it as LED. And there's a push button on PC13, so that will be a GPIO uh, input instead. I will label it as a button. Another most important thing to enable is our UART line. For this nuclear board, UR2, which is on, on pin PA2 and PA3, is physically connected to the ST-Link TX and RX. So just by writing to UR2, data will appear on the ST-Link COM port. And that's a very convenient way to do this. All right, so we need to enable PA2 and PA3 as UR. And I know that they're on UR2. So go to UR2, select the mode to asynchronous. And exactly, this got mapped out to PA2 and PA3. And if you've used this board long enough, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll be quite familiar with this. All right, and I'll change the board rate. I'll start with 9600, and then I'll test. I'll increase the speed in my code. And that's pretty much everything we need to do here. So let's just double check with the clock configuration. It seems to be the maximum clock speed. And now we're ready to generate the code. So on Project Manager, select a location to store your file in. I'm going to store it at this location. I'm happy with it. And I'll call it printf tutorial. And this is the keel part. All right. And uh, we need to select the right IDE. Um, it's keel for this first part of the video. And um, we can click on generate code. Uh, and while the code is generating, for any of my business contacts, you can always get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. All right, code is generated successfully. Click on Open Project, and this will take you to Keel. Um, and on Keel, the first thing I'll do is that I'll compile the project so that I keep adding the code while it's compiling to save time. So click on Compile. And uh, what we need to do to be able to use a printf 
is to, um, I've got a guide list here that I'll include down in the description of the video so that you can follow and copy the code I have step by step. So the first thing we need to put in the code is this section, which redefines the function uh, put, put char prototype. Um, so for a Juno C compiler, it will be it will replace the put char with an IO put char, but for Keel, it will be this particular one. So it's an if defined and then else. For this one, this is not defined, so therefore it will be this one by default. That's the first thing we need to do. And by the way, our code compiled without any errors, which is always good. And then the next step is that we need to define the body of the put char prototype and set our UART instead. So I'm going to copy this over and put it into begin number four, where all the user function definitions should go. So what we need to do as a definition of the body for this function that um, inside here we're going to put our UR transmit and we are using UR2. Uh, for, if using other board and if UR is different, all you need to do is to change this UR handle. And you'll see this is the one that is defined by Cubemix by default for our UR2. All right. And then it's going to go something like this. It will take the parameter CH and uh, it will transmit a byte at a time. And, um, <clears throat> and a very large timeout. But this one will function out as a printf. Um, and then next we need to uh, include the standard IO library so that we'll be able to use a printf and demonstrate an example. So in my includes, I'm gonna put standard IO library. Um, and then we can go ahead and do a very quick test with the printf to print a hello world, for example. So let's do that. I'm going to print this into, into the while loop, and I'll set a delay of one second each. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to add to enable printf. So let's compile the code and load it to our new clear board, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate. Compile it without any errors again. And now let me plug in my board, and I'll load the code. All right, now let's open a serial terminal. I'm going to open real term, and we should be able to see a COM port. I should have only one, which is comport com15, and I know that my board rate is 9600 as I set it in QMX and click on open. Um, and now let me reset my board. Perfect. I can see my Hollywood being printed here. And now let's also experiment with a, an integer and a floating point. So if I want to print with a an integer, let's say hello world is equal to something, and I want to print an integer. So let's say an integer of um, my variable I call it and it's equal to zero and I want to increment it and print it in the loop so my variable plus plus and I print it here uh, all I need to do is to put the uh, percentage D for an integer and it should be printed as part of my printf routine so let's try that exactly it's being printed and I can see the counter is incrementing one two three four and so on um, and also I can I, I can try with the floating point that's a very critical one with Keel, it's very easy to use floating point, but with the Juno compiler, you need to do one more step. So float, my float, I'll call it, and it's equal to 0.0f by uh, initially, and I want to increment it. Similar to what I did with this one, I'm going to increment it by, let's say, 1.345, whatever, and I want to print it instead of this. So that will be a percentage f, and I'll put three decimal places, so uh, 0.3f. And um, let's try with that again. All right, great. I can see my floating point being printed successfully and correctly. So that's pretty easy. That's how you use Keel to um, use printf instead of how you are transmit. Uh, very, very easy indeed. Um, and now let's get into the second part of the video and I'll show you how to do the same thing, but with the system work print for STM32. That's slightly more advanced. You just need to do one more step to get it to work with the, uh, with the Eclipse compiler. So let's do that. We're going to start with the same base project in uh, Cubemix, but we're going to click on save as. We're going to save it as um, a different name. Um, and it's going to be um, system workbench instead of um, system workbench for Steam32. That's the name of the project. I'll give it. And it'll be exactly similar thing. And the IDE this time will be system workbench for Steam32. And click on generate code. All right, code is generated successfully again. So with System Workbench, you can't just click on Open Project. What you need to do instead is to click on Open Folder and copy the path to that folder. And uh, at the same time, we need to open System Workbench individually here and manually. So that's the project path. I want to copy it entirely. And I'll wait for my System Workbench to open up. 
All right, my system work is taking a while. While this is happening, let me demonstrate to you the bonus bit. I told you I'm going to show you a bonus bit, which is how to use Keel um, to print something on the debugging terminal without the use of UART. So in case of the STM of 4 discovery, this one doesn't have a UART mapped out to the STLink USB, but there is a way around it. And let me show you that way before I get to um, Eclipse. So I'll get back to my Keel project again. I'll show you this very, very quickly. It's so easy. And it's in fact describing this uh, link in Keel Guide how to enable the debug printer viewer. Um, and these are the steps I'm going to go through and show you how to do it. And then we're going to demonstrate a printer again in Keel, but not using UART, it's just using the Keel debugging window. So with this one, you can't use real term, you can just use a Keel debugging window. All right. So very, very quickly, you need to go to uh, Manage Runtime Environment. And before that, let me just disable all the printf code that I did here. So I'm going to uh, comment out this one. And I'll also comment out the redefinition of the pull chart because that can affect my code. And I'll go to manage runtime environment and under compiler and IO, um, you see these standard error, standard in, standard out. You need to enable all of these and set their mode to ITM. And click OK. And now you need to get to uh, options for target and go to debug, settings, and trace. You need to enable the trace and uh, maximum core clock is 84 megahertz by default here. And you need to um, uncheck this one. So you need to check this one and un keep all of these unchecked. Uh, all right, and that's everything. So click OK. Let's just double check again. So that's everything we need to do. And now we should be able to uh, print something out. All right, so we're already printing Hello World to the terminal, uh, printing a floating point. So let's compile the project. Um, and load it to the board now it will be exactly a similar thing but now we're not using UART we're just using Keel debugging window and this can also work on the discovery board as I mentioned earlier so loading it to the board and now we need to enter Keel debugging window we should be able to see our data printed and on the debugging window you need to go to view and um, serial windows and open debug printer viewer and it will appear here on the bottom right. So let's run the code. And here we go. I can see my Hello World and the floating point being printed. So this is the bonus uh, method that I wanted to show you. All right, now back into the um, Eclipse compiler. I'll show you how to use the printf there. So here we go. We've got our uh, system workbench opened up. Go to file, open projects from file system. And I'm going to paste my uh, project file path and click on finish and now the project will be added to system workbench and here it is printf tutorial uh, system workbench for stm and uh, i'm going to open the source code uh, i'll copy exactly the same thing i did in eclipse so i need to copy this um, as a first step it will be very similar steps the first one is to copy this over the redefinition of the um, potchar prototype i'm going to put it in here and as you saw with the Juno, this is the IO put char instead. And then I need to um, define the body of the put char prototype. And that will be done in uh, beginner number four as always. And it's UR2 in this case as well. And then I need to add the standard IO to be able to use a printf of Hello World. But there is one more step that I'll show you now in a bit. All right, um, now let's print a Hello World for testing I print it in here and I'll put a delay of one second too uh, and now uh, the um, additional step that we need to apply is that we need to go to project properties and CUC++ build setting and MCU um, GCC linker miscellaneous linker flags and add this particular flag so I'll copy the flag and what you need to do is you need to right click on the project and go down towards the end to properties, click on this, and go to uh, CEC++ build. And expand this, go to settings, and go to MCU GCC linker miscellaneous section. And what you need to do is that you need to copy this flag, linker flag over to here, to be able to use printf with a floating point. Because with this one, the printf will work, but floating point will not work. So I'm going to I'm adding it here um, before I use floating point. So click OK. And now we should be able to use printf normally. 
So let's compile the project, load it to the board. We'll first test with the normal hello world, and then we're going to, then we're going to copy the floating point variable over from our KL project. Uh, now let's just wait for this one to finish compiling, and then we're going to carry on with the tutorial. All right, perfect. Finish compiling. There's one more thing I'd like to do as well as I'm going to increase the board rate to 105, 200. Um, I like to use a very fast UART. And um, now let's load it to the board. It will recompile itself again. Um, I need to select uh, AC6 STM32 um, run. All right, it's first recompiling because I made a change here. Finish compiling. Now it's going to load it to the board. There we go. Fully loaded. Now let's... Uh, Get back again to our UART terminal, and I know it's Compost 15, the same thing, it didn't change, but the board rate now changed to 105 to 100, and let me click open. And here we go, I can see my Hello World being printed to the terminal, perfect. That's how it is printed with, um, um, with a Juno compiler. Now, one more thing, let me do the floating point, just double check that the floating point indeed works. So, let's see, Hello World is equal to, um, let me print a, an integer first. Um, Right, let's say an integer my variable is equal to zero. And I'll also add the floating point on the go. So my float is equal to 0, 0.0 if. And I'll test printing them with a printf. So this is a normal variable. We're going to increment it and print it here as part of the printf. There we go. So let's compile and load this. We're going to test this and then we're going to go ahead and test the floating point too. All right, okay, sorry, I added an S mistakenly, so that's without an S. Okay, loading it to the board, and back again to the terminal. Let's open that up again, and reset my board. And here we go. So, I can see my counter and integer is working. I have one more step to verify that floating point is working. I'll use the floating point variable and increment that. Floating point plus equal to 1.345 something if, and I'm going to print this as part of the printf, with um, two decimal places perhaps. All right, let's um, load that to the board. All right, loaded successfully, let's open the terminal. And perfect, I can already see my floating point being printed. So that is, this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. That's pretty much everything I wanted to share with you at this tutorial. And um, I hope you found it useful. If you really like the tutorial, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And uh, for any of my business contacts, you can get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.